Okay, chapter two, building blocks of managerial accounting. This is where um, our course really starts, all right, where the main uh, material is. Whoops. <laughs> it's not moving, sorry. Okay, so what we do in this chapter is the first thing we're, we'll do is distinguish between service, merchandising, and manufacturing companies, and the way the costs flow differ and the financial statements differ. So that's what we'll focus on there. And then we'll also look at the value chain and its elements, <clears throat> and then distinguish between direct and indirect costs, product costs, period costs, fixed costs, variable costs, relevant costs, irrelevant costs. All right, there are a whole bunch of ways that we cut different costs, and we'll look at them in, in this chapter. And then, you know, it's going to go into your head, and it'll be something you'll be able to use for analysis for your whole life. And then probably the most important part or the most challenging part will be this piece right here to prepare financial statements for service, merchandising, and then for manufacturing companies. These increase in terms of complexity. <clears throat> so service companies sell intangible services, all right, like healthcare, insurance, banking, consulting. Those are all intangible services. It's the largest sector of the U.S. economy. We used to be large manufacturers, but we aren't anymore. And generally, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're a service company, you have no inventory. Okay, so no inventory on the balance sheet, no cost of goods sold on the income statement. But a, a merchandiser, okay, let's say a merchandiser as opposed to a manufacturer, all right? A merchandiser resells tangible products that were bought from manufacturers and suppliers. So your best example is think of like Walmart, Best Buy, Costco, big box companies. All right, they don't manufacture those goods. Well, actually Costco makes some of them, but they're, um, <clears throat> they're manufactured by someone else and then sold by these companies. Okay, so that's the difference, for example, between a retailer who deals with the public's public versus a wholesaler all right they buy from they are the they buy from wholesalers okay and they carry a substantial amount of inventory so a merchandising company will have a cost of goods sold <clears throat> now a manufacturing company um, uses labor all right so people labor plant and equipment to convert a raw material into a finished product. So what they do is they buy raw materials, then people work on it in the plant, and then they produce a product. Okay, and the example here would be Toyota. And so first you've got raw material inventory when we take steel and start to form it into the car. Once we start to form it into a car, it becomes work in process inventory. And then when it's completed, it becomes finished goods inventory. Okay, so raw materials, work in process, finished goods. Three new inventory accounts that we haven't used before. <clears throat> and here are some examples of service, service, merchandising, and then manufacturing companies. So service company, believe it or not, an airline or a bank or insurance company, Goldman Sachs, those are all service companies. The primary output is an intangible service. All right. I mean, we definitely get value. <clears throat> excuse me, but there's no, there's not really a tangible product, and there's no inventory. Now, in Amazon, Best Buy, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, those sell tangible products that they purchase from manufacturers and suppliers. So the balance sheet will have inventory on it, or it'll call it merchandise inventory. All right, but then a manufacturer, all right, manufacturer would be uh, Procter & Gamble, General Mills, Apple, Toyota. Those are all examples of manufacturing companies. Um, they t make new tangible products using raw materials, labor, and production equipment, okay, including everything, everything that it takes to make it. So we take all these costs and we convert that, we try to build the cost of a product from this. All right, so what we end up with again, raw material inventory, then work in process when we're working on it, then finished goods when it's finished and ready for sale. Okay. 
on the value chain is a good concept. Um, when they and think to yourself when you say value chain, this is what the customer pays for. This is what adds value, and and these are costs we've we've got to um, got to make sure we cover with our selling price. So first of all, research and development to develop the product, design. You know, we can save a lot of money with good designs. A bad design is going to cost you a lot of money, okay? And if not in production, then it's going to be in customer service. Then we've got production or, or purchases right here, marketing costs, distribution costs, and then customer service. Okay, so these are all, these are all activities that add value, okay? That's the key thing. I mean, as a... Uh, consumer, do you want to buy something that doesn't add value? All right, you only want to pay for the value added. You don't want to pay for non-value added, right? <clears throat> and this is an exa these are just examples of what the elements are of the value chain. So this would be d researching and developing new or improved products. The design is detailed engineering. This is production, which makes sense. Marketing is promotion and advertising. Distribution is delivery of products and services. And then customer service is, is the support that's provided to customers after the sale. We don't always think about this, but it's a very um, an important cost, an important thing to keep your finger on because that tells you about the quality of your product frequently. Okay, now what we do is we also use an expression called a cost object. And I think for when you first hear it and when you first start using it, it's a sort of an odd concept, you know. But the thing of it is a cost object is anything that you want to know the cost of. Okay, so you might look at an individual car if it's Toyota. The individual car itself, what was the cost? Or how much does the hybrid cost? Maybe a model. All right. Or what's the cost of different marketing strategies? Okay, what is the cost of, of say, online marketing um, versus billboards? Okay, uh, geographic business segments. What is the cost per business segment? What's the cost for a department? Okay, so in here you'd have the department or the cost of the whole department. What is the cost of sustainability initiatives? Okay, so these are all things like you can think of it as like a perspective. If we had a, an elephant and everybody was standing around it looking at their own piece of it, okay, and, and trying to figure out what that cost was. We're all cost, costing and looking at, at pieces of the elephant, okay? Now, we classify costs as direct or indirect, and a direct cost is a cost that can be traced to the cost object. It can be traced, and you know what this should say is easily traced. Oops, oops, let's see. Easily traced. I mean, everything can probably be traced, but not necessarily easily, okay? Traced to the object, that would be direct. And think it can be directly traced. We can associate that cost with the cost object. All right, whatever it is. Um, an indirect cost relates to the cost object, but it can't be traced specifically to it. Um, it. And it might be something that's used jointly among several cost objects. For example, a, um, a machine that, you know, that drilled holes and things, that maybe it was applied to all different products. That would be an indirect cost because the cost of that machine can't be really traced directly to what was done to one product. Okay, that's probably a lousy example. I should come up with a better one, huh? But I'm not going to. <laughs> okay, I'm worried about this being too long. I don't want to make these too long. So the way we as assign costs, both direct costs and indirect costs, the direct costs can be traced directly. And generally what we have is direct material and direct labor. It's, it's easy to trace to an object. Like if you were building a chair out of wood, you would know exactly how much wood you have in there. And the amount of cost um, that's assigned to the object then would be very precise. But if it's not directly traceable, then it's indirect. And in that case, we're going to allocate the cost. All right, so this is less precise and there are many different, many, many different ways that you can allocate costs. 
okay? And that would be like, let's say, the supervisor on the floor, okay? That would be, be an allocated cost. You don't know how much of, that, of the cost of that supervisor went into producing one product, all right? I, I say that like you're going to answer me, you know? Okay, now, when you think about internal decision-making, we might include different costs in or look at costs internally differently than we look at them in externally. So for internal decision making, we consider all the costs occurred, incurred across the value chain. So that will include engineering and, and selling costs and service costs. And we've got to make sure that that selling price covers all of those costs and makes some money. We can't just be in business to lose money, right? For um, external reporting, number one, we've got to follow GAP. All right, we don't have any choice. And product costs are those incurred by manufacturers to produce their products or by merchandisers to purchase products. So it relates to the cost of obtaining inventory for sale. Okay, I'm going to say that, inventory for sale. Whereas a period cost, period costs do not get treated as inventory. They're immediately expensed. Okay, so a period cost does not get treated as inventory. It's immediately expensed. Okay, so, so it's um, incurred in other functions of the value chain. So that would be like research and development is a period cost. Okay, service is a period cost. It isn't something that we is directly traceable necessarily to, um, to the cost object. All right, and where we see period costs is in operating or in selling general and administrative expense. That's where it is. Okay, whereas product costs, product costs, I'm going to say found in cost of goods sold. Okay, always look at the word cost of goods sold. That tells us everything. Okay, that's what it is. It's the cost of the book of the goods sold. Now, this is a good summary of total cost product costs and period costs. And in the first place, here's our total costs. Here are, and that's divided up into product costs and period costs. And the product costs are part of production. Okay, and those are initially recorded as either, you know, they come in as maybe raw material inventory, if it's material, or it's added to work in process, if it was labor or what we call overhead. The period costs will include research and development, design, marketing, distribution, customer services, that, that is all, um, those are all period costs. And these are considered operating expenses. Okay, the harder part is up here. And what we've got is an income statement uh, for the current, let's say 2017, and then a balance sheet for 2017. And then we're going to have an income statement for 2018. And what they did here was we've got inventory that was sold in 2017 would be cost of goods sold in 2017. Inventory that was not sold until 2018 would be inventory in 2017. And then in 2018, it comes off the balance sheet, goes into the income statement as cost of goods sold. All right, now we'll work a lot of problems on this and you'll get a lot more solid on it. Um, I know it's, um, I don't know, you don't really see it until you start to work on problems. So I'll just get through this and then we'll do some. Now the next part is the big piece on financial statements. And you know what I might do is break this up into two pieces. So I'm going to stop now and then do a part two.